You're listening to Radio Kidnappers, and this program is... Oh, God, uh, come the on, pressure! The longest title in yeah. the world. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's the wonderful world of Wadini. It is, and it's still very wonderful. <laughs> I just always am taken by surprise by the fact that I'm supposed to have made it even That's more right. wonderful than it already was. Absolutely right. Couldn't get much more wonderful than what it is, I could it? There we go. Great to have you back in the studio. Uh, the wonderful Lou from Wadini Books and <laughs> have a lot more. Three more great books to review. But before we get to there, just remind our listeners, we want to get a good book. Where do we get it? Mm, we're 16 Tomato Road in Havelock North and 44 Hastings Street, Napier. We don't even need to come in and buy it. We can buy it from your website. Mm, we'll Wardini.co.nz. Yeah, and you've got a Facebook presence? Yep, and you're, Instagram. You're everywhere. Yeah. How good is that? <laughs> All right, three more great books like I suggested at the beginning of the program, and let's start off with Goose the Artist. Look at the cover. I love it. It's by Kimberly Andrews, New Zealand author, and it does say on there, our award-winning series, because that's Puffin, and Puffin the Architect oh, yes. was um, one of the books, and Hound the Detective. Mm. Uh, and both those characters turn up in Goose's book. So this is obviously about an artist who is a goose. Who is a goose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, you'll notice there that there are study notes in the front cover. Mm -hmm. And then as we go through the book, we'll find that, that there are also study notes in the back cover. Yeah. Because for adults reading it, and they will want to point this out to their children. I mean, it's a damn good yarn, okay? Mm -hmm. But also, Goose is channeling certain um, artists and um, types of art. So, I'm Goose and I descend from famous painter Geese. Every day I paint and draw to make a masterpiece. So it's the Art Awards next week, and Goose is going to put in a, uh, a piece for the Art Awards um, in the competition. So... Um, there's so much to look at on each page. Yeah, I was just going to say that you yeah. just keep looking at the page and finding a different thing every time you look. Yeah, and you can Fabulous. probably make up extra stories about what's going on, you know. Mm. What's Hound doing over there? Hound is saying, make sure to capture my good side. You know, everyone wants to be yeah. in on, um, on the painting, and they will be. So Goose is thinking about what she's going to do. Um, and this is her amazing studio with all sorts of things in there. Mm. Um, Kia arrives, her feathers combed and preened. Hmm, what will I use? Charcoal, I think. So we're talking about how charcoal is used, and she's going to try and paint Kia. And so Hound comes trotting in, and what she ends up doing with Hound is like a cubist um, painting, but she's not very happy with that. And then on Wednesday, it's giraffe, and that's a pointer list painting. And she will talk about this time. For my smallest brush, I start by drawing basic shapes, a triangle here and there. Next comes colour, spot, dot, splot, yellow for hooves and hair. And she doesn't actually mm. say, this is a pointer list painting. Mm, yes. But um, when we look at that and you look at the study notes later, you can go back and talk to that child about it. Right. So if you've got a six or seven year old who's really into art, you'll probably get... Mm all of that out of this book yes. whereas if you've got a three or four year old you're just going to have a great deal of fun yeah. with oh look she's painted a giraffe yeah i'm pointing <laughs> at things yeah absolutely. yeah and they're yeah. great drawings aren't they Goodness. she's amazing this artist um oh there oh, we that. go is that a yak uh it's cow oh, it's a cow <laughs> looks like a yak yeah and they're doing swirly strokes with that one but she's never satisfied, the thing is. And she's got a cherubic pigs in this one. Mm. Um, I love it. And we'll find out what all the sorts of paintings are. And then that really dark um, Renaissance style, I suppose, in that one. Fox. Um, and so we go through. Nothing's right. Nothing's right. And she's such a perfectionist. And then she wakes up and thinks, oh, gosh, I've missed the deadline. <laughs> so I've got all these paintings and everything but I've got nothing to do with it and then she's like actually hang on a minute and she, she makes an exhibition for herself that's what happens and she understands that things don't have to be completely perfect no. in order for it to be appreciated and she has all her friends around all the people that were involved in the paintings Big party and there they are I love it. look at that wow it's magnificent everybody's in it what a great book and you just want to spend a lot of time having a look at what everybody's doing there are even little canapes on the table mm, as yeah. there would be at an art exhibition and the red dots look where people have bought them yeah yeah <laughs> that's, I think she that's thinks great. of everything so you, well, you can talk about that can't you that's what happens when you go to an art yeah, exhibition exactly and also i failed to mention that there's a spider on every page and you've got to find them oh right like yeah. superman and seinfeld Sure. Did you know that? <laughs> no. Every, every episode of Seinfeld has got Superman in it somewhere. Oh, like on a like on a poster or, or yeah, a little model standing on a shelf somewhere. And I didn't know that. There you go. 
Yeah. That's the great thing about coming to Radio Kidnappers. I learn something new <laughs> every single time. Tell us about Mickey and Me and the Out of Tune Trees. This is by Marion Roberts and it's set in Australia. So Alberta is an 11 year old girl and she normally spends her summers on a bike going down to the beach boogie boarding with her mates. It sounds idyllic. But this summer several things have gone wrong. Uh, the first thing to go wrong is that the council or somebody were digging and they've gone through the sewerage pipe and the whole place stinks of poo <laughs> and the tourists aren't coming and the businesses are suffering and the town's not got the vibe it normally has in the summer also her best friend is ghosting her really? like she's not replying to messages and mm. and feel and being quite frosty with her and she's like well i don't know what's gone off there yeah um her mother is Tammy Bracken and Tammy Bracken has written a book called Tammy Bracken's Guide to Modern Manners so in their house for, for uh, Alberta and her little sister Clementine it's always elbows off the table girls and, uh, and their mother is really annoying she's yeah <laughs> yes. even I can see as a mother that this mother is annoying. terribly annoying dad's done something very naughty and there's friction in the marriage as well it's but this is all from Alberta's point of view and she's kind of oblivious to, she's 11 mm. and you know stuff's going on within the family that impacts her but she doesn't really get it to begin with and i think that's quite real mm -hmm. um she needs a lot of it explaining to her at some point so um the parents are then very human and fallible and it's alberta and clementine who's only eight that become sort of more in charge of the story and then mickey who's the boy that um doesn't go to her school or anything but they've got a house down the road and they come for the summer mickey's um just come back from japan his grandfather passed away quite um suddenly and he's mourning and he gets in touch with alberta and says do you want to hang out and they go up the forest it's like a, it's, it almost feels like one of the tropical rainforests that like the dane forest mm. or whatever it's called um i might get i've got that wrong but there are these huge amazing trees and mickey is a bit of a film buff and he records them and he talks to alberta about japanese is it shirin yoko or something the japanese forest bathing mm -hmm. and alberta's like oh my god you don't have to take your clothes off do you and they're like no you just go and be calm and soak up yes. the vibe from the trees because all the, the trees are living beings and, and they go and they start making little documentaries and it's lovely but then ken their trees become under threat oh, no from man from um loggers yeah or um they want to get rid of these massive old pines and put something else in but yeah it's all explained mm. in the book really well and um so they go on this massive campaign to save the trees and you'll find out why it's called an out of tune tree as you read the book but just wonderful sort of for readers of between that sort of 9 13 age bracket but yeah. grown-ups too what's the moral at the end of it i think friendship and nobody's perfect and um I just I really liked the way that the grown-ups were just so rubbish <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know really make it really humanized parents you don't have to be perfect even though Tammy Bracken is supposed to be perfect mm. and her book's going to be on Netflix and all this kind of thing and she's just falling apart at the seams so um, real friendship and looking out for each other and doing what's right even though you're quite scared about it it's gonna cross the genders that book is everyone gonna like it yeah definitely yeah, yeah there's no it's not a girl's book or a boy's book, you know. No. Yeah. I've been looking forward to the next review. Uh, sort of strikes me as being right up my alley. The, <laughs> the Darkest Sin. Yes, featuring Cesare Aldo. So this is by D.V. Bishop, who teaches at Edinburgh Napier mm -hmm. University. But he is a Kiwi, originally. Really? Yeah. Um, and I'd, ages ago, we would have reviewed City of Vengeance, mm. uh, Renaissance Florence. And Cesare Aldo is an officer of the Otto. So he, that's the um, Florence's criminal court. They're not like police officers, because they didn't have police officers mm. then, but that, that would be the equivalent. He's kind of a detective. So it's a historical novel. Mm, yeah. yeah. And at the end of book one, we find out that um, Cesare is, he, the way that he leads his life is a bit of a crime. He's gay, and you're mm. not supposed to be gay no. in Florence in 1537, mm. you know. So if he's found out, if he is denounced and it's proven that uh, he is a bugarone, as mm. they call it in yes. here, then he's for it. Um, but he's an excellent officer of the Otto. And in this one, oh, it starts off with wonderful plans. So there is a convent, Santa Maria Magdalena. Mm, and it's got the plan for it. I, know, I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's almost looks like Cluedo, doesn't it? It does. Who done it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. It and does. there's a murder at the Ooh, convent, yeah. and someone is found 
naked, a man in the convent, naked, stabbed, blood everywhere, like looks like a crime of passion because they've really gone mm. at him. And it's found in the scriptorium by one of the nuns. And then it's almost like a locked room mystery mm. because how did he get in? He's a bloke. Nobody's claiming that they know who the heck he is. So Cesare manages to get in there and find lots of things out. Also, at the same time, his um, colleague Strocchi, I think it's Strocchi, it might be Strocchi, he's gone home to introduce his mother to his new wife, Tomasina, and um, notices this sort of beggar in the churchyard wearing this belt buckle that he recognises, and it was one of the Otto officers that mm. went missing ages ago and apparently washed up down River dead, mm. and this, this bloke's nicked it off the body mm. and... Um, so he digs him up. <laughs> They're like, oh, we just buried him. We didn't know who he was. Because yeah. you say he's 1537. Yeah, They've not, right. you know, got yeah. dental records or anything. Exactly. It's my CSI yeah. So they dig him up, have a look at him. And he figures like, you know, oh, okay, he's been murdered. So we know from the last book who that is. Mm. And that someone might be coming a cropper. All right. So there's all sorts going on. And the darkest sin, I think, is a double entendre because the nuns talk about the darkest sin being taking another person's life yes. deliberately. But really, the darkest sin for Cesare would be his sexuality at that time because that's how it was judged by society then. You yeah. mentioned the first book. Do you have to have read the first book to get the most out of this book? No. Um, I think you could read it and then go back and read the first one and it would fill in the gaps mm -hmm. for you. But I would recommend that you read City of Vengeance first because that's how I do things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it sets it up nicely and you get to know Cesare and Strotky. Yeah. Strotky. And, um, yeah, so I would go that way. So who's going to read it? Is it going to be someone who's interested in history or is it going to be someone who's interested in murder mysteries? Both. Yeah, yeah I think that's the beauty of it because it's... Um, you know, if you've got your Jack Reacher fans and mm -hmm. they want the, the, the tough guy, yeah. Cesare is a tough guy. Um, he's got the blue icy eyes and, you know, people feel quite uncomfortable when he puts them on it. But he's a kind person mm. as well. So he's kind of got it all going on. Um, so I think blokes that read blokey crime novels mm -hmm. would love it. Anyone who's really into that historical um, fiction, because the Ponte Vecchio is there with all the, the meat sellers, and then you've got the, the sewing quarter and all the guilds, you know, and the, the Jewish quarter, and it's fascinating from a historical point of view as well. Are we going to be uplifted when we f turn the final page, or, or are we going to ask you? I know, but I like the happy ending. Do we have to be uplifted? <laughs> um, I think you will have been intrigued and you will have been entertained, absolutely. I, I don't know about so. the uplifting part. Yeah sort of one of those things that oh geez i wish i hadn't read that or oh no think? no there's, yeah. there's nothing um terrible in it and i think because all the characters lived so long ago if they ever lived because they're fictional i yes. sometimes do muddle that up um then you're not so yeah. bothered <laughs> I, wonder they are, I wonder if they are really based on someone ah uh, what has he said there are like the archbishop of florence was he's based that on the real one in the story, based on real incidents and people, Andrea Buon del Monte was the Archbishop of mm. Florence, and he kind of bought himself into that mm. role. And there, it, there's a lot of corruption, you yes. know, in the church. Um, and one of the, the nuns was inspired by an incident recounted in the letters of Sister Maria Celeste to her father, Galileo Galilei. And there you go, look at that. Yeah, but everyone else is made up. My pleasure, mm. as always. You look after yourself, and we look forward to doing it again, same time, same place, next week. Nice, thanks, Ken.